just the feeling we got walking through the school. Like, there's no bells and whistles, there's no computer lab, but you can feel the energy and you can feel the joy in the kids in the classrooms. And my husband and I both looked at each other and we're like, oh my gosh, this is it. Like, <laughs> we, we found our school. Our kids were actually attending a public school, elementary school, down the street. We were looking for a more challenging environment for our kids. We didn't know what we were getting into. But literally within the first semester, we were all in. As a public school educator for so many years, I was a never charter person. I realized now in hindsight that I had been fed a lot of propaganda about charter schools. And when I started actually researching it, I learned, oh, it's really what is best for the education of each child. At Great Hearts, we love to form the hearts and minds of students through the pursuit of the true, the good, and the beautiful. Our students are going to read great books, from Frog and Toad in first grade to the Brothers Karamazov in their senior year. We took a look at that book list, and we were sold. One thing that we had found in our public school experience is that we were constantly monitoring what our children were being assigned to read, and we really loved the book list at Great Hearts because we knew we were confident that they were being presented with material that was incredibly rich and would really uh, trigger their imaginations and their love of learning. The distinction of Great Hearts, as we saw it at that point, was that it would have the diversity that private schools didn't have, but then also an excellence in curriculum that typically one would not find in a public school. Our aim is to raise up virtuous young men and women who have a sense of purpose and vision, who are endowed with a sense of destiny that's been shaped by the great conversation, and who are equipped to live it out. Great Hearts does an incredible job of uniting and marrying the intellectual formation with moral formation. One of the great things about Great Hearts is that it appeals, instead of what is most base in our, our human nature, it appeals to what is the highest. For me, education isn't just about what you're learning in class that academic-wise, it's a building and forming of character. They're gonna study and pursue those ennobling and lasting things with teachers who are intellectually, morally, and aesthetically alive. The teachers at Great Hearts set an exemplary example. They go above and beyond in also demonstrating these virtues in their own lives. There's so much to love about Great Hearts, but it all starts in the classroom. What I love about teaching is being in the classroom with my students. This is a classical education, and for generations it's only been available at elite private schools. But we seek to make it available to all families, at least to all families who are willing to go on the journey with us. One thing that we were pleasantly surprised with actually when we got to Great Hearts is that not only is the curriculum itself unifying in that it all coheres, but it also is unifying in that it brings diverse students from different socioeconomic backgrounds, different cultures, and it unifies them through the pursuit of truth and through the reading of excellent material. All the riches of the liberal arts those which set their soul free, these are their rightful inheritance, their intellectual inheritance. And we endeavor to give them their initial possession of it. I was initially drawn to STEM type, type schools because I thought I love science and technology and engineering and math. What I found out is that most of the schools really aren't STEM. What they are is giving kids a screen, which doesn't, I don't think the science shows help them learn very well. But what Great Hearts is, is they emphasize science and engineering and math. They give them all those things that actually will make them technology workers. So I think Great Hearts, even though it doesn't advertise itself as STEM, is truly one of the deepest STEM schools that you could go to. We're going to an elite private school without the $30,000 price tag. As a professor in a, a, a liberal arts college, I had met a few of the graduates from the Arizona schools that came and they were impressive. Great Hearts was the best decision we could make for our students' education. As we continue to grow, we invite you to join us for the journey.
Hello, families. My name is Samuel Heisman, and I am the head of school of Great Hearts Harvestin here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And I would love to welcome you to our virtual information session on the Great Hearts Difference. As you know, our mission is to cultivate the minds and hearts of our students through the pursuit of truth, goodness, and beauty. I've been working here since 2010, and that mission still gets me up out of bed in the morning. It keeps me invigorated, charged, and inspired. I've not seen any other like it in any other institution. And I'm so happy that we will be able to tell you and give you perspectives. You, prospective Baton Rouge parents, will be able to give you perspectives on what a mission like that has, what impact it has on the education of your students and on the life of your students from after graduation, what sort of impact it has after graduation. But you don't have to take my word for it. I'm not telling you the impact. I'm here today to lead an interview of a panel of several graduates, current students, and current and former Great Hearts parents to speak to you about the Great Hearts difference. So what I'd like to do is introduce everyone real quick, and then we'll get going. I'll ask a couple questions to this panel to talk about the difference this education, this culture has had on them. All right, first, I'd like to uh, introduce Angel Rodriguez, a current senior at Maryvale Prep. Angel, so good to have you. Yeah, thank you for having me here. Happy to be here. Great, great. Next, I'd like to introduce Nikhil Jandiala, graduate, uh, 2017 graduate of Anthem Preparatory Academy. Nikhil, great to have you as well. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Wonderful. And then my former student, Captain Brandon Cork, 2014 graduate of Veritas Prep Academy. Brandon, so good to see you. Likewise, likewise. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And Happy to be here. Wonderful. We also have with, uh, with us Miss Kelly Grove. She is currently a mother of uh, a number of Veritas <laughs> students. <laughs> Good evening. Lovely. Thank you for being here. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. We have Dr. Daniel Scoggin, co-founder and parent of two Great Hearts alums and two current Great Hearts students. Some at Chandler Prep, the alum, and Arate Prep, current Arate Archway, current students. Good evening, Baton Rouge. Excited to be here. And then finally, we have Miss Maria Beyer, parent of two Veritas Prep alumni. Maria. Hello, good Baton you. Rouge. Nice to meet you. Wonderful. All right. Panel on the Great Hearts Difference. What I'd first like to ask is the following. When you think back on your Great Hearts experience, whether you started with us in ninth grade, sixth grade, or fourth grade, when you think back on your time at Great Hearts, what parts of it do you treasure most? Or when you think on your current Great Hearts experience, Angel, um, what parts of it do you treasure most? I'd like to start, actually, with, with the youngest amongst us. Mr. Rodriguez, if you wouldn't mind, I'd love to hear your answer to this. Something that, that always runs through my mind is how the teachers take their time to get to know you and help you with whatever you need, like, if it's a certain class that you don't understand, if it's the homework that's difficult, um, it's just something that they do. They just take their time to help you and get to know you as a person, too, and what your goals in life are. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So that personal touch, I, I really appreciate you elaborating on that. Um, Mr. Cork, Mr. Captain Cork, if you wouldn't mind, tell us about the difference or what you treasure most about your Great Hearts experience. I'll give it to you. So I think the thing that I treasure the most, even to today, is the true uh, renaissance nature in which everyone grows at the prep schools. And that whether it's poetry <laughs> or um, the dramatic arts, fine arts, science, whatever, that I've at least dabbled in all of them. I can be like, oh yeah, I have done a charcoal self-portrait or I have been in a production. Um, and so not only the diversity of those challenges, but the depth of them um, and that nothing was, you know, just at face value easy that we all got into it and uh, engrossed in it. Captain Cork did write uh, a 14 line iambic pentameter sonnet for me. Several, I believe. <laughs> I believe at least a couple. <laughs> at least a couple. Wonderful. Uh, Mr. John Diala, Nikhil, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, you have a unique station with us, actually, Nikhil. You are a graduate as well as a returned alumna. You, what do you, what do you do currently? Uh, so currently, I teach uh, senior year humane letters. Wonderful. At... All right. So your perspective is uh, is 
has, has got this dual nature to it. Could you tell us a little bit more as a student, what did you treasure most about your time at Anthem Prep? Yeah, there's a, I think there's a lot. I just want to second what uh, Mr. Rodriguez said, which is that um, Great Hearts, I think, has an incredible way of bringing teachers together that uh, genuinely care about the development of their students. And um, I went to a public school before that. And when I uh, set foot in Great Hearts, um, even though there was the academic rigor, um, the teachers always um, cared to be there for their students and for me. And um, that's a big reason why I wanted to come back and teach is so that I could give that to other students as well. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, yeah, especially when you have students who are reading things like the book behind you, right? Like Machiavelli, when they're reading Brothers Karamazov, Dostoyevsky. It's, an, it's, it's so insouciant, so important that they have a teacher like you, Mr. John Diallo, who is going to not just let them sink or swim, uh, but come alongside and make sure uh, that this is a rich experience. Wonderful. All right. I'd love to hear from some of our parents. Uh, Ms. Grove, are you there? Yes. All right. When you think back about your time as a Great Hearts parent, and you've, you've gotten to see the Great Hearts experience from a couple different uh, developmental ages, mm -hmm. uh, what do you treasure most? Uh, as a parent, I definitely treasure the activities that we do um, and the partnership that we actually have with our teachers. Um, I find that the communication in order to fulfill the mission for our own students um, and to have that open communication with our teachers allows us as parents to fulfill that mission and to see our, our children grow throughout the process. Um, and some of my most fav favorite memories are um, being able to, after our students read one of their beautiful literature pieces, there are times where we can actually, as parents, provide a special activity to where they can either retell the story or relive a moment in their story. And our parents are able to be part of that moment. And um, I get goosebumps just talking about it because now I'm starting to see it into the prep side. Um, for my sixth grader, they're starting to transition because it was such a great moment for our parent community along with our teachers to have this opportunity for our older students as well. So um, I'll be experiencing that in the next few weeks with my sixth grader for the Wind of the Willows uh, literacy. That's beautiful. That's my, that is, uh, having taught that class, that is my favorite book to discuss in the middle school curriculum. That's wonderful. It's been lovely. All right. All right. Uh, Miss Byer. Ms. Maria Beyer, you know, you have two alumna, actually two, two, two beautiful daughters who I, who I got to teach. Tell me a little bit more about what you, what you treasure about the Great Hearts experience now that, you, now that you're a little more removed from it. Well, I think the, I mean, there are many legacies to Great, Heart, Great Hearts education, but I think if I were going to try to capture it in a few words, I'd say I think that we, Great Hearts teaches its students to read for meaning. I mean, they, they come out being able to read very well from great hearts. They learn how to listen carefully because, because they're always engaging in dialogue. So they don't jump to conclusions, they don't interrupt, they, they really engage thoughtfully and, and respond uh, you know, in, in meaningful ways. So I think, I think those are really important things. And to hear, to hear your student come back to you, even my daughters and are both now 28 years old. So they've been out a long time and they still talk about their great hearts experiences, the books they read. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I hear about crime and punishment or, you know, and, and very <laughs> specific details about it. So yeah. those are the things I love. That's wonderful. And then, uh, you know, Dr. Scoggin, Dr. Scoggin, if you could come forward, let's, let's, you have a unique perspective. You have, uh, two in grade school and then two who have graduated. So you, you kind of get to relive experiences uh, that that have already been that have already been had. So tell us a little bit more about what you treasure most as a parent in the Great Hearts experience. Yeah, well, thank you for that question. I think, you know, what I treasure fits with what what Maria and, and Kelly were talking about. There's just such a difference we see in our, our kids as they go through the program. So I have a, a little kindergarten daughter, Willa is her name. She's a sweet little girl. She comes home from school every day, bursting with energy, uh, talking about what she learned, talking about the conversations that she's had with her classmates. She lit loves school. 
uh, she gets tired. You know, there it's, it's the, the days <laughs> are full of, of of learning and and, and lots of, of good work. Uh, but she is so excited about what she's learning. And literally, you know, my, my wife and I, we, we pour into the moral formation uh, of our daughters. I have four daughters. And, you know, Great Hearts reinforces that so deeply. Literally, our daughter comes home more grounded, uh, more disposed to the good, uh, more curious, more willing to listen, as Maria said, uh, than when we sent her to school that week uh, or, or that month. And so we, we really love the, the alignment, uh, the moral and intellectual alignment we see uh, between the school and what we're trying to do at home and forming, forming our daughters. Absolutely, absolutely. Though I'm not a panel mem member myself, I have five children, four of whom go to Great Hearts, uh, have gone to Great Hearts. One of the things I've loved is that by Thanksgiving every year, I actually get to listen to my kindergartners I've seen four students go through kindergarten. By Thanksgiving every year, I'm listening to my kindergartners read uh, read books and talk about them well. Uh, it brings tears to my eyes every Thanksgiving, uh, just knowing that my kindergartner is able to read and share that experience with me. And I can't echo your point enough, Dr. Scoggin, knowing that I'm dropping somebody off, dropping my my babies off to a place that's going, that where they're not just gonna be physically safe, they're gonna be morally safe, and they're gonna right, be better right. uh, at the end of the day than when I dropped them off. That's right. So I'd like to go to the alumna in particular here. I'm going to skip a question that I anticipated asking next. All of you, almost all of you talked about how meaningful the relationship with the teachers was and what role they played in their life. I'd like to drill down into that a little bit more. If you have specific memories or if you have uh, more examples, or if you want to just get a little bit more specific about these moments when teachers were uh, very important in in your high school experience or in what ways uh, they took their time with you and really and made the difference for you. If you just want to get more specific about the difference a Great Hearts teacher plays in your life, what role did they play? Why don't we start with Mr. John Diala, if he's available? Yeah, um, I think one of the fondest memories, uh, and it's the more recent one, um, as a senior uh, at Great Hearts, we write the uh, senior thesis. Um, and I remember um, my advisor was uh, the current um, headmaster at the time. And um, he had taught me since I was a middle schooler. Um, <laughs> and so I really wanted to have him. He was busy um, a lot. But I remember um, almost every week he would schedule out time for me to meet till six, seven o'clock, just working on this thesis. Um, even though he had other responsibilities and obligations, he still met with me and um, something like that, um, I would never have received anywhere else, just that one-on-one -on -one close connection and relationship. And I still talk to him uh, after I graduated as well. So. That's Mr. Goodrich? That's Mr. Goodrich, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. One of the, one of the most animated, intelligent guys I know. Uh, I'm glad to, glad to hear you had that experience. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, if we could bring you up. When you think about, you know, you're a current Great Hearts student. Tell me a little bit more. What role are the teachers playing in your life? Um, just like um, the man before me said, uh, they take their time a lot with this senior thesis um, specifically since it's such a big paper. And we have to use two books to compare and contrast on a certain, like, subject inside of that book. Um, our teachers will take their time with us to read through the books as well and discuss what our paper is saying and to like revise it and, you know, tell us what we did wrong or what we could correct or like different things like that with grammar. Um, another thing I remember a lot is back in middle school, my, my grades weren't the best and my teachers would always pull me aside and say, hey, like, did you have time to do your homework? Did, did you remember you had homework? Did you forget to write it down? Things like that. These questions they would ask me. And I just remember like them telling me every single time, hey, um, just in case you forget tonight, you have homework. Or hey, um, before you come into class today, did you do your homework? And they would always take their time to remind me about my homework and about my grades. And it was something I really treasured because it showed that they cared about me and succeeding in my class and, and also in my sports. Yeah. And believed um, and believed, right, that you were capable of that of that high standard. Yeah. Um, 
go ahead, bring bring all the alumna on real quick. I'm gonna ask Mr. Cork, but if anybody wants to chime in with additional memories here, Mr. Captain Cork. Uh, yeah, Brandon, what role did the teachers play in your life? So first I'll go ahead and embarrass yourself maybe a little oh. bit, but then I'll uh, <laughs> go on a little tangent from what Angel was saying. Um, and that one of my memories, <laughs> at least in regards <laughs> to you, Mr. Eisman, is um, like, we're basically still junior hires at ninth grade. Um, stepping into the semester and realizing, oh, we've got poetry class. Like, <laughs> there's that natural skepticism to it, that natural like um, knee jerk reaction to like write it off as, you know, right. with whatever adjective. Um, but I remember a the passion you put into it, and b your way of communicating it and engrossing us, and. I remember when we went around the classroom, there were classmates that maybe I underestimate at the time, but I'm like, you know, they'll write whatever. But I can genuinely remember almost every classmate of mine around the room, you know, reciting poetry that I would have never to have guessed come from their mouth. And I think that has to do with the beauty of a, just a topic that wasn't um, maybe initially appreciated due to the passion of yourself. And I can say that for Mr. Austin, when it came to geometry and the proofs, another thing to initially be skeptical of. But um, to Angel's point, not to go on for too long, I do wanna highlight on the other staff and that the personal attention that I got from my college advisor, Ms. Colvin, is 100% one of the reasons why I am currently wearing this uniform and this rank today. Um, her passion to help me pursue West Point or the athletic um, advisors and leaders, uh, whether coaches or administrators who helps stand up my running career from the ground um, and come to me asking me, hey, Brandon, how can we make the running program better? Like all those other things outside the classroom as well definitely catapulted me forward. I'm very thankful. That's great. That's great. I appreciate it, Brandon. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, for the kind <laughs> words and for the memories. Those are those are my first year of teaching. Fond years of introducing ninth graders to Spenserian, Shakespearean, Terza Rima sonnets, etc. But I uh, wouldn't trade those memories. They they were delightful, delightful group of, of young men and women. So this next question opens up, I think, to what Mr. Cork was talking about just a minute ago. I want to know, uh, starting with the alumna. What uh, what opportunities did a Great Hearts education open up for you, and and how did that education prepare you for these opportunities? How did you find yourself ready uh, for the rigors to come after your senior year? Or Angel, how is it preparing you? What do you find yourself ready for as you start to contemplate life after senior year? Uh, why don't you go ahead and bring up all the alumna, Dana, Danny, and then we'll start with Angel. I am going to bring up the parents eventually, but we'll we'll start here. Um, so something it's preparing me for is definitely a college life. Um, mm -hmm. It's helping me prepare to read books day and night, um, every for homework every night um, to do my homework, be early to my classes <laughs> like that. But it's also like helping me um, on not giving up on to keep on trying that like no matter like how hard things may get, um, your teachers will always be there to support you if you need help. Um, you know, like you're if you would do sports that could get your mind off of things if you're really stressed and and it's also helping me like realize that um it, it can like it, it can also help me become a better better leader and a better better person in my later future excellent thank you thank you uh my two graduated alumni I uh, Nikhil and, and Mr. Cor Mr. Captain Cork. There we go again. Uh, why don't we start with Nikhil? Uh, how has your Great Hearts education prepared you for the rigors after after high school? Or what opportunities did it open up? Well, and uh, it immediately helped in college when um, I graduated with uh, economics and political philosophy, and being in a seminar, I felt leads. Uh, from my other classmates at the time who had never been in a seminar um, since their freshman year in college. Um, and to be there and to feel comfortable, uh, really, I owe that to the Great Hearts experience. Um, and I'm not sure if this really answers your, uh, your question as to opportunities, but one thing I want to echo uh, is that, and this was told by a former teacher of mine, is that 
that Great Hearts Education didn't, um, the main intention wasn't to prepare me for, for prepping for something else, but that I was simply prepared for being a better human being. Um, and I, I recognize now that I live a better life and I entirely owe that to a great heart. And my Excellent. Friend. Excellent. Happy to hear that. Happy to hear that. Um, Brandon, I'm sure you could say much the same. I'd also like to know a little bit more about the, the concrete opportunities that opened up for you. I mean, West Point is, I mean, it's an okay school, Brandon, <laughs> a, but I'm kidding. West Point's very, very impressive. Tell us a little bit more about the opportunities that opened up for you. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to start by honoring another teacher, Mr. Ward, who first uh, taught me about the concept of a step zero. Um, and, you know, he would always say it sarcastically. Um, but, but I think, um, you know, this conversation is a step zero in a lot of ways. And that um, one thing has certainly led to the, to the next. And that, as I mentioned in the last uh, question, Ms. Colvin's just willingness and eagerness to help me even when I was dismayed at certain steps of the process, she helped get me to West Point. And, you know, same thing, West Point, which not to advertise for them as well, has a very dedicated staff who helped me get to the next point in terms of that investment in individuals uh, to the point where um, in my field, uh, I've been able to do some awesome opportunities, go to some awesome schools. Um, but on a personal level, uh, I feel enriched. I'll second everything my uh, student and alumni peers have said in that I just felt like I had just that advantage and not that uh, not that advantages will guarantee success, but they have a kind of enhanced and formed the discipline that Angela was referring to, but they launch you forward um, because you have that advantage and you have the uh, trajectory of that discipline to push you forward. I had a similar teacher mentor who said something to me. He said, one of the best things I can tell you about living a good life, but also about living a life where you are providing for the people you love is to learn how to learn well. <laughs> and it sounds what I'm, what I'm hearing from each of you is you, you've been in positions where you've had to learn new things and you found it uh, invigorating, maybe not easy all the time, but you found that you had some facility to do that. Um, that's great. That's great. Um, parents, why don't we bring the parents up real fast? You know, parents, you have a unique vantage point on the college process uh, for your seniors and for your budding seniors. Uh, but you also have a unique vantage point on um, how uh, Great Hearts is preparing your student for other opportunities, maybe extracurricular opportunities. Tell us, how has a Great Hearts education prepared your students for next stages after graduation, but also, Ms. Grove, for, for things outside of school? How has Great Hearts made them uh, how has Great Hearts made a difference for them outside of school? Uh, I, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Why don't you start? I have the younger one, so I can start with um, for what we, how it prepares my my children. You know what we do. Our kids, and every day they are reciting uh, poetry, and um, and they're learning how to speak and stand properly and make that eye contact. So every time. My children, I have noticed, go out into the real world and there's conversations to be had. They are able to have that conversation with an individual, looking them in the eye, answering the questions, and even having a um, a question to come back. I mean, they're able to have true conversations. And I think a lot of that is owed to the um, encouragement from our teachers in the classroom who are always asking for that extra, more in-depth question to make that child think, to make that, give that sense of wonder. And it, it started to become more natural for the kids. Um, like I said, I have a first, fifth, and a sixth grader, and I could now go out into public, and my I know my children are gonna have a conversation with an adult, and they're gonna be able to be, and they're just fine. And I, I, am, I am very grateful for the Great Hearts classroom and their teachers for encouraging my students, my children to reach deeper into a conversation and to find that sense of wonder. And I can see that kind of transition into their real life. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Mrs. Grove. Dr. Scoggin, um, tell us a little more. Yeah, well, this, this is a great question. And, 
you know, Kelly, thank you for that. It was beautiful. Um, the uh, thing I would say, I have two, two, two daughters who graduated from one of the Great Hearts Academies uh, several years ago. Actually, one of my daughters is out in the workforce already. She graduated from college last year. And, you know, there's such a demand for Great Hearts graduates. And I saw it in my daughters because they know how to think so clearly. Um, and they can think about what are first things. They have a philosophical disposition that in any uh, of their realms, you know, marketing, business, uh, finance, uh, you know, how do you order what's most important and what's less important? So, and, and what's best for the human person, what's best for others. They bring that moral order and that philosophical order to all of their decisions. And they're easy to be around because uh, to, to Maria's point before they listen, they know how to speak well, they're very clear in what they're saying. Uh, they can see the big picture, they can solve problems. Uh, and so I'm, my, my daughters are self-sufficient. I'm, I'm asking them for advice more than, <laughs> than, than uh, you know, them asking me now because they think so clearly. And uh, I'm just so, so proud of, of who they've become. And, and Great Hearts is, is certainly a big part of that story. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Scott. And Mrs. Beyer, uh, if you have uh, any any tidbits about the difference a Great Hearts education has made on on your, your daughter's after graduation. How's it opened up opportunities for them? Well, um, like some others have said, so, you know, my girls went through college. They're now part of the professional world. They both have great jobs. And, you know, one of them in, um, manages a hotel. The other is in sales. So very pragmatic skills that they've um, developed. But I think it was the, I think it was the comfort with continued inquiry that um, has helped them more than anything because they don't just, you know, when something comes up that they don't understand, they don't just stop at that. They just are very comfortable, comfortable thanks to Great Hearts, uh, with, with going forward, asking more questions. I think that's something that was really taught to them there. And uh, I think that comes in really handy throughout life. You know, you just don't stop when you don't understand something. You just continue the inquiry until you do. That, I think, is a legacy for them. Well put. Well put, Maria. Well put. Um, I'd like to go back to our, uh, you know, to our current senior and our two, and our two graduates. Um, you know, we are, we are a budding school. We are a starting school. In many ways, we're incubating and we'll be offering a full slate of extracurriculars and athletics next year. But I'd like for our families to hear from you about your experience with sports in Great Hearts. Maybe you got a specific memory uh, that you just love telling. Maybe maybe you can convey the feeling that you had being part of a championship team. Maybe uh, you can convey more about the experience of sports at Great Hearts or extracurriculars. Maybe maybe you found uh, another passion in something like mock trial or or model UN, etc. But I'd love to hear more about. Uh, your experience with sports and extracurriculars at Great Hearts. Um, uh, why don't we go with Mr. Uh, John Diala? Um, well, in high school, uh, for almost all four years, I played uh, tennis. And um, great, I think Great Hearts really helped with that um, by helping me balance uh, what I wanted to do in class with what I wanted to do um, when I was going and playing tennis. And um, one of the ways uh, in which it really helped me, and I think maybe um, it helped the other one and, uh, students as well, is that uh, sports is a great place where you bond and meet friends. <laughs> and the experience that you have at Great Hearts playing sports is that it's not just any friends, but they become lifelong friends who... Um, are in the same pursuit as you. And so it's almost like the pursuit that happens in the classroom doesn't stop. And then you go and you're doing something else, but this community that you build around um, something different is really similar to this other community that you build in the classroom. And so there's just this great feeling of um, being around your peers, whether you're on the court or off the court. Beautiful, beautiful, thank you. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, tell us, uh, tell us a little bit more about your, your, your sporting experience at Maryville. Yeah, so for starters, a quick little recap about my life here in Maryville. Um, last year, we had our first tackle football team, 
And I have to say, it was the best feeling ever. We um we made it to the playoffs on our first year, and then we made it to the championships. We got a message from a, a former uh, Cardinal uh, football player, uh, Christian Kirk. He was telling us, like, congratulations, Maryville Prep, on making it to the championships. Um, I wish you guys the best of luck, and I hope you guys win it. Unfortunately, um, we lost that year. We lost last year. But this year, we made our comeback. Uh, we went back to the championships, and we played against the same team. And we beat them. We beat them by a field goal. And that was the best feeling ever, I have to say. Uh, just making it so far, working hard over the summer and after school, after a stressful, like, or not even a stressful, just a tiring day at school, um, m making it to our practice and working hard. It felt really good making it to the end and, and winning with the team you, you practiced with and grew stronger with. Um, our bond was greater too by the end of the championship. And I have to say it was a really great feeling like playing sports here at Maryville. That's great. That's great. Yeah. I imagine going through a season where you make it all the way to the state playoffs. You probably have some, some brothers now uh, yeah. in a lot of ways. That's great. That's great. Angel. Uh, Mr. Mr. Captain Cork. Captain Cork. <laughs> okay. Tell us a little bit more. Um, yeah. I'll just highlight on uh, both of on what both of my friends have stated in that, A, I can remember many distance runs being a cross-country runner <laughs> in which unfinished discussions in the Humane Letters block were taken out onto the Papago Mountains as we <laughs> ran for a few miles. Um, but I'll second a little bit, uh, hearkening back to my point on what I treasure the most in that, uh, in the cultivation of this Renaissance person, this well-rounded person. It's a uh, core concept of what we believe in the Army as well, and that not only do we want professionals who are mentally and critically all there, um, but have the physicality because there is something innate to both bringing the soul and the body together and just refining them. So when I had uh, my peers with me out there running or, you know, I've had several teachers who didn't have to on their Saturdays come out to my meets or come to our soccer games. Um, it was just an amazing feeling of community um, and that, you know, it's not just some weird hobby we do on the side running for right. five miles in 120 degree heat in Phoenix, <laughs> Arizona. Um, but that it means something to the school. Uh, it means something to wear a Veritas Jersey um, or, and to compete against a Chandler prep kid as you're beating it out on the last hundred meters, you know, there's something special to that and that um, the, the fierceness of the competition, I think it just helps build that Renaissance man, that complete picture. Wonderful. Wonderful. Very good. Very good. Here's what I'd like to do. Let's let's bring all the participants up for just a minute. We've got audience. We've got about two minutes uh, to what I'd like to do to, to the Q&A portion to where we as a panel answer your live questions. Right. Two minutes till that. But what I'd like to do with my grand panel here leading up to that moment where you can submit your live questions. I'll be redundant here. Go ahead and submit your live questions into the chat box. And our moderator will pick them up and send them my way. Go ahead and submit them in the chat box. What, what I'd like to do leading up to that is ask my panel in, in, you know, 30 seconds or less, what advice do you have for first time Great Hearts students and first time Great Hearts families? What advice do you have for first time Great Hearts students and or families? Uh, Miss. Mrs. Byer, could we start with you and then and then we'll go to Ms. Grove. I'd love to love to start with some parents. I would just suggest that um, parents engage and 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 their students engage with other parents and students as much as possible and with the teachers. The teachers are so open at great hearts to to getting to know these families. Really welcome that. And so the more conversation, the better. All right. All right. We're gonna build a village here. Mrs. Grove. I do have to echo that. Um, from my experience so far, the partnership is so important with your your teachers. Um, don't hesitate to send an email. Don't hesitate to sit and read the stories with your kids um, because doing this together is what's going to make our children the well-rounded individuals that we strive for and to continue fo following that mission that Great Hearts pushes um, and encourage us to do so don't hesitate 
to communicate. Don't hesitate to read a story with your kids. I highly, highly encourage that as a new parent. Um, it has been beautiful to sit and read stories with my children. Some of it I'm rereading and some of it's for the first time and the conversations we could have afterwards. So um, stay engaged. That's probably the number one. Love it. We love it. We love to partner with parents. That is, that is one of our key differentiators. We love to partner with parents. Mr. John Diala, if you could, what advice might you have for a first time student or family? I can't help but echo what's already been said, which is I have the perspective from a teacher. And um, one thing I think I would say is that as much as the education offers to the children, it can offer that to the parents when they are in communion with the children, their, their children and the teachers. And when everyone is on the same page, it not only makes everything um, smoother, but it makes everything better. And the feeling of a community really thrives uh, when everyone's engaged. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm gonna close out with Dr. Scog and I'd like to hear from my friends, uh, Angel and Brandon here in just a minute. So Angel, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, um, the advice I would give is have fun and read the books. Like the books are really like a main important about a great heart school. They are really, really fun to read. I've enjoyed every single one of them. Um, and yeah, just to have fun with them when you're discussing with your teachers, like put your point out there. And if you have like a strong belief on on a certain character, like Fyodor Karamazov, um, keep it, you know, back it up. I love it. I love it. That's great. Yeah, get a little feisty in discussion. We can we, we can take it. We love it. All right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Captain Cork. Um, my one piece of advice would just be stick with it. Uh, even if you're skeptical, I think the process and the end result is just so beautiful. Like I mentioned earlier with being skeptical, maybe about writing poetry or having to do a proof, like math is hard enough. Why do I have to do a proof? Stick with it. The whole process is beautiful. There's an end to it. Um, so even when given a little resistance, that feeling that comes up, trust it, go through it. I, I don't think you'll regret it. Love it. Love it. All right, Dr. Scoggin, if you could close this out, what advice do you have in, in 30 seconds or so for, for new families, new students? Yeah, thank you. I, you know, I agree with Captain Cork. I mean, it's it, it sort of like embrace the journey. I mean, there's such intentionality with the Great Hearts program from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. You know, there's a vision for what a second grader should be doing in the second month of the school. There's a clear vision for what a eighth grader should be doing the second semester in literature and philosophy and, and math and science and the arts. And so as a parent, I just feel like, you know, I support my child and I interact with the teachers and support them. But there's a vision for my kid. And my wife and I can relax and enjoy the journey that we're going to be on uh, with our daughter as she goes up through the program. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, panel. It's been it's been wonderful having you on. I hope you will uh, enjoy. I hope you do enjoy these next uh, few questions that we have coming from our audience. Um, we're going to open it up. Q and A. How does Great Hearts keep students engaged and challenged? How does a Great Hearts education keep students engaged and challenged? This was submitted from uh, from one of our unnamed participants, uh, but we love love this question. Uh, how does Great Hearts keep students engaged and challenged? We think here. Well, I, th I think one one thing I would say, Mr. Heisman, is uh, you know. We know the students, the teachers know the students. And mm -hmm. so um, knowing the personality of each learner and loving each student for who he or she is, uh, is the ultimate form of accountability. And so that that challenges the students because, you know, like with Angel, we're gonna pull, pour more, uh, pull more out of him. I'm sure Brandon was a, a feisty student. So we're gonna pull, you know, just continue to challenge him because we know how far he can go and what he can do. Very good. Yeah, Mr. Captain Cork, why don't you go ahead? I, I, I saw a big <laughs> as this question came up. Yeah, um, I think the uh, thing is we've harped a lot on the teachers, not to take away from that at all, but like the peers, um, which we were hitting on a little bit earlier, are just so awesome in that, you know, while your teacher has gotten to know you and there are cases where, you know, I had maybe a math teacher before who is now in the humane letters classroom with me. 
um, whether my section or not, I've known some of my peers by the time we get to Dostoevsky, I've had them for six years. And so not only can we discuss that book, but we can bring back all these other works uh, we've pulled on in the past and be like, John Smith, I thought you brought up this in the Republic. How does this now stand? And so the, the conversations become so uh, multidimensional, 3D and tangible. So that always kept it exciting. Very good. Let's let's uh, let's hear from a few others. Let's hear from a few others. How, uh, Mr. Adi, uh, John Diala, I'm I'm really curious from the perspective of both the teacher and and student. Yeah, uh, I mean, one thing I could say is funny. We're just reading Brothers Karamazov now, um, and I just got this feeling today that uh, one thing that I think really keeps them engaged and the students love it is that they're not. It's not me and the students, um, and they're not trying to understand anything from me. It's us trying to understand a great work. And there's something really good about uh, students and the teacher together pointing to something else. And that engagement when you're there with the students and you're not there apart from them and, and pulling them in your direction um, really keeps the momentum um, of the students. And I can't say anything more about the challenge other than the text. And as challenging as they are, they're just as brilliant and beautiful and good to read. And Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Mr. John Diallo, we've covered that you that you graduated from Great Hearts and that you now teach at Great Hearts. In between, where did you study? I forgot. Uh, I studied at Arizona State. Arizona State, right. And studied economics and what else? and political philosophy and political philosophy double major love it all right uh let's jump here another question from the crowd what are the after school enrichments you offer students i'm going to answer this and then i'm going to morph it into a question for the rest of the the panel we offer uh a full slate of sports right in the fall we're hoping to offer um volleyball cross country flag football in the winter basketball and uh, soccer, and then in the spring, baseball, softball, and track and field. Uh, this is this is our plan right now. So that's sports. That's one enrichment. The other enrichment, uh, we offer uh, a series of after school clubs uh, that are faculty host, and we also have uh, a homework club and Athenaeum. Uh, in our after school clubs, we are also working with some community partners to bring. Uh, some people in chess, we're hoping for uh, some martial arts and a few other things as well. But I'd love to hear from my panel. What were some significant, experience, significant experiences you had in after school enrichment or in, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be sports, could be a club. Uh, what were some significant experiences you had with uh, after school enrichment or parents? If you know of uh, an experience your, your children really valued, go ahead. And Add it in. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop mediating so much. Maybe somebody could just go ahead and jump out there with this question. Well, my, my daughter had the, the opportunity to play very high level volleyball at Great Hearts, you know, state championship level volleyball. And you know, in, in terms of the character formation that goes on with sports, like Captain Cork was talking about, I mean, it's unbelievable how uh, the virtues of the academic model are so supported by uh, the lessons they learn in that competitive field and just the, the deep bonds uh, that my daughter had with the other volleyball players, watching them grow together. Um, I feel like, you know, that really was one of the capstone things as a great hearts dad to sit there and watch them grow and compete together. Um, enrichment's a good word. It was, it, I think it enriched uh, our family just as, as much as it enriched her to be part of those uh, parents uh, who are watching our daughters grow so much over the season. Very good. Very good. Yeah, in addition to the sports um, and kind of going on some topics I was hitting on earlier, um, I was so curious after my 11th grade year of dramatic arts that never would I have thought I would sign up for it, but I signed up showing an hour and a half early before school in order to put on a production uh, or, and I did choir and, um, and not only those 
more pre-established ones, but there were several occasions we went to faculty we had uh, established relations with and we're like, what do you think about this kind of club? We have a few guys like we did uh, who are into strategy and board games. And what if every other week we just get together and play chess, Stratego, whatever it may be, and uh, get together. And there's almost always a teacher in a positive response to be like, yes, I'm all here for it. Let's do it. So um, even if there's nothing prescribed, like I would say, if you have that community that loves something, there's going to be some backup on that. I would almost guarantee it. That's delightful. Delightful. Here, I want to I want to transition over here. Uh, what what foreign languages does Great Hearts study, and how are they taught? Talk to us about your your experiences with uh, foreign language at Great Hearts. I mean, I know you all took Latin at one point. Uh, but maybe you stuck with Latin and then went to Greek. Maybe you took a maybe you took a modern language or a Romance language. But tell us about your experiences with languages, foreign languages at Great Hearts. Well, to be clear, every student at Great Hearts will study Latin in the middle school. At Great Hearts Harveston, they'll study Latin in the lower school as well. And then in high school, they'll get the choice to continue on an ancient language track, Latin for two years and then Greek for two years. Or they can take a modern language, either Spanish or French, et cetera. Um, graduates, parents, tell us a little bit more about your children or your own experience uh, with languages at, at Great Hearts. I have I have something that I could maybe contribute here, and so so the my daughters um, both took Spanish um, at Great Hearts, and then one of my daughters uh, went on to to do a double major when she went to college. One was hotel management was a minor, actually a minor, it wasn't a double major, it was a minor in Spanish, and um, which came in enormous, has come in enormously, um, to be enormously helpful in the um, hospitality industry, managing a hotel now. But one of the great things that happened as a result of the Spanish that she took in high school is that she did well in college in Spanish, and then she um, was able to spend a semester in Peru and really, you know, have that wonderful studying abroad experience that I don't think she would have had if she hadn't learned so much in her foreign language at Great Hearts. She had such a leg up having gone to Great Hearts uh, and learning Spanish from Great Hearts. That's great. We should also mention that our, our language classes are by and large like collegiate level translation. Um, yes. our, our seniors who study Spanish are translating Don Quixote by the end, our, our students who study Latin at the end of their 10th grade year, they're working on the Aeneid. And in Greek, uh, they will work on the epic poems as well. Um, full immersion, full immersion. These are these are rigorous, but incredibly joy, joyful uh, language classes. I'll just throw that tidbit in there. But somebody else, what are some of your uh, experiences with languages at Great Hearts? Yeah, well, maybe I could sp oh. maybe I can speak a little bit to um, uh, the Latin and Greek track, which is what I continued with in high school. Um, I kind of want to offer two points uh, here. One is that practically, um, when I took Latin and Greek, I didn't realize this at the time, but afterwards, my speaking just improved. And I think, um, Dr. Scoggin, like you were saying, my thinking improved as well um, because I'm able to recognize what I'm saying and I see what I'm saying is really important that every word. Um, has a certain meaning, and now I see this meaning and how it derives in English from the Latin and the Greek, and just knowing that etymology is just practical and useful and helpful. Um, but apart from that, um, I and I still keep up with my Latin uh, today, is that as a teacher, um, I can go into uh, a Latin or a Greek class and um, see how the students are participating in the great conversation at a deeper level. That there's something about reading the book once it's translated, and then there's something unique about the Great Heart experience where a student is not just reading the book that's been translated by someone else, but the book <laughs> that was written. And there's something amazing about that. That is beautiful. That's beautiful. Any final takers here, experiences with language? I'll just... Uh say one more thing on it and that the uh, america as a country right we always get a bad rap on oh americans don't learn a foreign language or our foreign language system is terrible and so i, I just hit again on the immersion and that uh, i took spanish uh, in high school and uh, by senior year we were having you know 
discussions, Socratic discussions on the Casa de Bernardo Alba and Don Quixote. And so not only are we getting that enrichment over in Humane Letters, that's carrying forward. And while we're also learning very, um, very tactful things uh, in terms of Spanish, like the subjunctive case and, and uh, growing our knowledge of just grammar and languages in general, we are continuing those discussions. <laughs> I remember some fun uh, in-class experiences, especially with Christy and Liz um, in that class, and that was an amazing opportunity. So I'll, I'll hit again just on the immersion and really grasping a language, not taking four years and going, yeah, I remember that Banyo is bathroom. <laughs> right. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Uh, panel, parents and alumni, thank you so much for coming and talking about the Great Hearts difference, what it's uh, what it's done, how it's changed your disposition, what it's opened up for you. Um, as a former teacher of, of some of your children and of one of you in particular, uh, this this does bring uh, this does make my chest swell a little bit. Uh, makes me makes me incredibly proud, but also just wonderfully humbled and honored uh, to have you here. Uh, and it's a humility and pride I hope to share with you parents who are listening in on this. We cannot wait to teach your children, cannot wait to welcome them into the doors of our beautiful building uh, and make the great hearts difference in their lives and in your lives as well. Thank you for attending. Uh, please do drop us an email at info at greatheartsharveston.org and please do fill out an application at greatheartsharveston.org. Once again, fill out an application at greatheartsharveston.org. Seats are filling up. Seats are filling up when we want to serve you. Thank you for attending. Good night.